Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about RBAC concept in Kubernetes. Uh, we call it as a role-based authentication control. So how we can uh, use this RBAC concept? What is the need of it? We will see this practically, okay? So RBAC means basically a role-based authentication control. So what is the need of this? So if you remember earlier, we talked about in one of the video about uh, what is the overall flow happens whenever we submit any request from the QCTL. So what happens is just to recap, first of all, we'll write the any YAML file that uh, whichever microservice we want to deploy. So we'll first choose any of the Kubernetes object. For that, we'll write the YAML file. Uh, that YAML file, first of all, kubectl will validate it. If that YAML file is valid, then we'll send that request to the API server. So the first thing that API server will do, the, that is a authentication. So now, on what basis it does the authentication? So what happens as soon as the cluster created, so under home directory, there will be one .cube folder, and inside that we'll have one config file. So in this config file, what happens is, we'll have the cluster information, as well as the user information and the mapping of that user and cluster, right? So this is basically an admin user who has the control, complete control of the cluster. So that admin user can do everything uh, on the cluster, right? But so basically this user details we uh, send along with every request. So authentication happens, okay? And the next step is an authorization. So, so now this is an admin user he can do everything. So in authorization, authorization will always pass and will not face any challenge, right? But now, what is the need of RBAC, role-based authentication control? So need is basically, now we cannot just give a complete admin uh, access to every member of the team, right? So if we keep doing it that, then there are high chances that we'll do some mistake and then that will impact overall your cluster or the uses that others are doing, right? So it's a very important to give the limited access to the people who are using the cluster, right? So let's say I want to access the cluster and I just, uh, you working on only one namespace and ideally I should have to work on that only one namespace. So then it's a better to just control my access only for that particular namespace. There is no point in giving me the whole cluster access, right? So to control that access, we have this RBAC mechanism in Kubernetes. So that with the help of RBAC, we can control the access of a user for a limited, uh, means may, maybe a specific namespace or all namespace, depending on our requirement. So how it works. So what happens is basically uh, uh, in Kubernetes to achieve the RBAC, we have four objects. The first one is a role. Second one is a role binding. Then we have a cluster role, and then we have a uh, cluster role binding. Cluster role binding. So these are the four objects. If you understood, then we can easily understand what is the RBAC and how we do it. So basically, rule means what? A rule means what? We have to basically uh, define a rule there. Okay. What rule we need to define? So it's basically a three, uh, in a three ways, we need to uh, define the rule. So what is that? First, we need to specify the API group, okay? So API group like V1 or authorization or your storage group or a networking group. So basically there are in a Kubernetes, there are a lot of objects are there and each object is developed in a different API group. So depending on which API group you want to allow access for, so write that API group, then under each API group will have a multiple resources. So out of that API group, what resource you want to allow? And then the actions, or we call it as a verbs, okay? So what are the actions we want to basically allow, right? So this way, first of all, you can create a role, okay? And then you can also create a user. So now to create a user, so basically uh, in Kubernetes for every interaction, we use a SSL. So we don't need a username password, we need a certificate. So whenever we create any new user for him, uh, if you want to uh, provide an access, so we need to create an user. So for this user, we need to create a key. We need to create a private key. Okay, so for that, we can use a basically an open SSL library. By using that, we can generate a key. Then that key, we can basically uh, get it signed by using an uh, 
certificate authority provided by the Kubernetes cluster. So for that, we need to create a certificate signing request. Okay. And then this certificate signing request, we need to get it signed from signed from CA, okay, certificate authority. So this is the procedure we need to do it basically to generate the certificate for this user. Once that is done, once you got the certificate, what do you need to do? Uh, this user, okay, let's say our user is a John. So for this user, you can create a key, you can create a certificate signing request, then get it signed from the CA and then add add this uh, csrs uh, sorry a certificate crt and key into config file so we need to add this certificate signed certificate and the key into the config file okay so this is what we need to do it for this john user and once this john user created by using a role binding so role binding basically help us to bind this role to this user Okay, so we can, by using a role binding, we can bind this role to this user. And then to uh, use this user, what we need to do is, another thing that we need to do is, we need to create a context. So context is basically nothing but a adding a cluster and user mapping. Okay, cluster and user mapping. So something like this. So here, if you see the config file, we have one context. So here you can see the cluster and user mapping we are doing in the context, right? So if you're using this same cluster and you want to use a join user, so we'll create another context, let's say my context, where you will provide a cluster as a kind kind and user as a join. So we'll see how to add it, but yeah, this is what we need to do it. Now once this is done, we once we are done with the binding of a role and this user, and then we change the context to the one that we have created for this user, okay? Uh, then this user, okay, this John user can only do what is mentioned in this role because we have binded this role with this John user. Then whatever operations, like whatever the API group allowed, what are the resources we have allowed out of this and whatever the operations we have allowed. So only that thing, this user can do it. If this user is trying to do something else in the authorization, okay, in this authorization step, basically that, request will be stopped or that request will be denied. So that's what happens in the authorization. So whenever you have multiple users and you want to put a restriction on the usage of those user, you can create basically a role, attach that role to that user, and then that user can only do whatever we have allowed in the role. And that's how the authorization works, okay? So this is basically the usage of a role and role binding. Cluster role and cluster role binding also is very much similar. Only difference is that here role, role is basically specific to the namespace, right? So if you want to basically restrict any user to a specific namespace, then you can create a role and role binding. But if you want that user to allow multiple namespaces, in that case, you can create a cluster role, okay? So there also to create a cluster role, you have to do with this same methodology where you'll create a role having API group resources and action. Okay, and then to bind this cluster role to this uh, user, we have to use the cluster role binding. So it's a very much similar, only difference is that role is specific to one namespace and cluster role is specific to multiple names. Okay, so I hope everyone got the concept. Now let me show you how to do it practically. It's a very simple. So let's go to the cluster. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, before I do anything, I just wanted to create one pod, okay? So how to create kubectl run the pod name i'll use the image is equal to nginx and the port is equal to it so this will create one simple pod let's wait for that to pod to be running okay i'll tell you what is the reason behind i'm creating this pod because now i'm going to create one john user and for that john user i'll just assign a role which is just only allowing you to read the pods okay even will not allow to create the pod Okay, so in that case, that user should only be able to see this pod. Okay, if that user try, John user tries to create a pod, that won't be allowed. We should get the error. So let's see. The first thing that we need to do is we need to basically create the John user. So how to do that? I have some st steps. Those are very much standard. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is we need to create a private key for that user because to uh, add that user, we need to generate the certificate for this. So this command basically simply 
generating a 2048 byte certificate. So you can see here, I'm just running it uh, and this John dot, he got generated. So this certificate got generated. What is the next step that we have to do is, next step is we have to generate the CSR, certificate signing request. So to certificate, uh, to generate a certificate signing request, you can see again, I'm using an open SSL. So we are generating a, a new certificate signing request with the key John dot key that we have created above. Then we are going to get the certificate signing request. And this subject, we can basically use it if you are using any LDAP or like what is your customer name, what is your organization name, if you, you can do it. Right? So here we are just doing it for testing. So I'm using our organization as an example group. So let's create it. So you can see I have now uh, John dot, um, sorry, uh, LS John star. So here you can see I have a John dot certificate and John dot key, right? Now let next thing that we have to do is get this John dot CSR, the certificate signing request, we have to get it signed from the certificate authority. So certificate authority. So for that, we have this command, but here you will see the certificate authority certificates are basically available on a master node under this location, etc, Kubernetes, PKI, CA.cert, and CA.key. So basically, this we required, okay? So now this is available because our cluster is a kind. So we are uh, basically accessing our kind cluster from the host machine, right? So on the master node, we have this uh, certificate. So what we need to do is we need to get it copied first. So we have to log in it to the master node. So how to log in? Docker exec hyphen it and our kind control plane flash. So if you do this, you're inside this and generally these certificates are available under uh, your um, ETC, Kubernetes, um, uh, basically Kubernetes, PKI. Okay, so here at this location, we have CA dot key and CA dot set. Okay, so this is the location. So what I'll do, I'll just come out and I'll copy this to the local, uh, current location. So how to copy Docker CP? We have to copy from kind control plane to this particular location. Okay, so let me copy it properly. So this is the path. So CA dot key, we are copying it to the current location, right? So it got copied. Let me copy the CA dot CRT. Okay, perfect. So both got copied. Now let's use this command. And what I need to do is, now the CA dot key is available in the current directory. So I'm just removing this whole path and CA dot CRT also available in the current directory. Okay, so let's run this command. Perfect, so we got this now signed john.crt as well. Now what is the next thing we need to do is we need to add this into config file. So to add this, we have to use this command. So I'll just explain the command. So what is this command is doing? kubectl config set credential for the john user and it's a certificate is this one and the key is this one. If I do this, this got added. If you want to see it, you can go to the uh, .cube config file. <coughs> So here you can see John user got added and this is the user certificate, right? So now what is the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a context for this user to create a mapping, okay? So how to do that? It's a very simple. So this is the command. We need a small changes so here, kubectl config set context, my context, user is a John and our cluster name is kind kind. So this will basically add this context, okay? Again, if you want to see the context, go here. And you can see this my context got added for the user. Perfect. So now we have the user ready. What is the next thing is we are going to create one role. So we have a sample role I have. You can create this role uh, as per your requirement. I'll just explain what this role is. So here as discussed, what we need to do is uh, basically we need to add the rule where we can define what API group. So for a V1, we don't need to specify. You can just use an empty bracket. Resources out of that V1, we have a lot of resources, but I want to restrict an access to only the pod. So that's why I have specified resource name as a pod. But if you want to allow for other like deployment, replica set and all, you can basically provide all those resources from a separated. And work means is basically an action. What all operation you want to allow on this pod? So we are only specifying that allow the operations like list, watch, get. So we are not giving even a create operation as well. Okay. So let's see. So this is my role. 
let me save it and create this role. So kubectl apply hyphen f role.yaml. So role got created. Now what is next is we need to basically bind this role to the user John. So again, we have a very simple command for this. So kubectl role, role binding, my role binding, role is my role and user is the John. Perfect. So now we added a restriction for the John user that this user can only list the pod. Okay. So now to access the cluster as a John user, we need to switch the context. We need to change the context to my context that we have created here. Okay, so how to change the context? kubectl config use context. And what is our context name is my context. Okay, so now as soon as we run this command, we will be starting running a command as a uh, John user. So far, we are running everything with the admin user. Okay, so let's see. We ran this. Okay, and now we are a John user. So if I do kubectl get pod, which we have allowed, okay, we have given the get permission for the pod uh, resource. So that's working. But now let me try to create it. kubectl run nginx1 hyphen hyphen image is equal to nginx hyphen hyphen port is equal to 80. So if I create, try to create, you can see it's giving a permission denied. So basically now authorization is failing because we are not allowed to create a pod. Even if I try to get a daemon set, it won't work because we have only allowed to get the pods, not even uh, any other resource. So getting daemon set is failed, getting namespace failing, getting replica set is failing, okay? Getting daemon set is failing. So whatever all the resources we keep trying it, it will not allow because we have only allowed the pod. So this is how basically we can put a restriction on what that user can do it. So this way you can add as many as user and you can attach a specific role that we should do it for that user. And then the authorization mechanism or RBAC mechanism will block that request if you are trying to do something apart from that. Okay, so that's all uh, we do it in the role-based authentication control. I hope everyone understood this con uh, concept. If you have any query, please put your query in the comment box. We'll definitely answer it. And if you like the video, if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe the channel and please share it with your network. So thanks everyone. Uh, that's it for this video.